Okay, now some of you may be asking, how did it compute cut and fill volumes without actually selecting anything? If you recall, we didn't select any graphics. We just went through a couple prompts, selected a cut feature definition and a fill feature definition, and then we magically ended up with 3D cut and fill volumes. And the answer to this is the feature definition and the volume option that's actually inside of the feature definition. Okay, so in order to display and calculate earthwork between our terrain models and corridors, we need to make sure we assign them with the proper feature definition and the volume option. So the key to this really is the volume option. We have volume options for existing elements, design elements, cut, fill. We also have subgrade, substrata, unsuitable. Uh, but in the previous example, we just used cut and fill and existing and design, essentially. So our corridor, all of those components, their volume option was set to design. So if you can see on my screen here, the feature definition for our aggregate in our corridor, its volume option was set for design. Its pavement layers were set for design. The end conditions were set for design. So all the volume options in that corridor were set with this design uh, as the volume option. Now in our, our existing terrain model, the volume option was set to existing. So because we have these two volume options set, the software formulates automatically a bottom mesh in our proposed design surface or proposed corridor, and then it compares that to the existing uh, volume option for the existing terrain model. So that's how that works. We didn't have to pick anything. It's just scanning for the feature definition and the volume option that's been assigned to those various components and 3D elements. So let's take a closer look at how this works just so you get a better understanding of how these volume options are set in the corridors and in the existing terrain. So now let's take a look at how the uh, volume option is set for the existing ground terrain. So I'm going to come over here to my open roads model. I'm going to come over to the reference models. And you can see here's my terrain existing DGN file. I'm going to go down to the terrain models. I'm going to select my existing boundary. Now this is our feature definition that's been assigned to our, our existing terrain. So I'm just going to right click on that and take a look at the properties. Now inside of the properties you're going to see the volume option for this particular terrain is set for existing. So that's how it knows how to handle that particular terrain. We have the volume set, we have the volume option set for existing, so it knows that that's an existing civil element. Now, furthermore, if we take a closer look at the actual corridor, let's jump over to the corridor file and see how that is set with the feature definition and the volume option. So I'm going to go up to my browse button here. I'm going to find my London Road corridor and we'll take a closer look at the uh, feature definitions for uh, some of the components in this corridor and how they're set up. So again, a lot of this is being driven by the volume option inside of the feature definition itself. Okay, so you can see here's all my different pavement components here. I got my top layers of pavement. You can see it's TC asphalt concrete wearing course. I got my bottom, which is my TC aggregate type A. So let's take a look at the properties of this one. For, for instance, since a bottom mesh is being formulated. So let's go and uh, take a look at that in our open road standards. I'm going to go down to my open road standards. Let's dig into that particular feature definition for the TC aggregate and maybe some of the pavement layers. Okay, so let's open this up, expand this a little bit so we can see this better. So I'm going to select my TC aggregate type A layer. I'll look at the properties for that feature definition. You're going to notice the volume option for that is set to design. Okay. Now if we also take a look at the asphalt layers, you'll also notice that those volume options are all set for design. So you can see any of the proposed elements that we have in our corridor, you want the volume option to be set for design. And the way this works is, once again, the software will formulate a bottom mesh. So it'll start from the top and it'll kind of scan down until it finds this lowest surface or lowest component. And it'll form a bottom mesh automatically that represents your design surface. And that's going to just take that design surface, compare it to the existing terrain, and then that's how we get the uh, 3D cut and fill volumes. So now let's go back to the 3D cut fill volumes drawing. Go back over here to Volumes Cut Fill London Roads. Let's open that back up. And let's take a look at the 
properties of the cut and fill 3D elements that were created in the 3D model over here. So I'm just going to zoom in and I'm just going to select my cut volumes here, my 3D cut element. I'm going to click on the quick properties. You're going to see the feature definition there is called volumes cut. Now if we look at the volumes cut over here in our open road standards, once again we'll go down to our feature definitions, find our meshes, and go to volumes, and if we take a look at the volumes cut, the properties of that, you'll see that the volume option is set for cut. So this defines that as being a cut element. Okay, now the same thing applies for our fill elements. If I come over here and I select the fill elements, you can see the feature definition for this one. It's called volumes under bar fill. And if we were to dig into the feature definition of volumes fill over here, you'll see that the volume option is set for fill. So once again, these volumes cut and volume fill, this is strictly for displaying inside of the 3D model and you want to make sure that you have those volume options set accordingly otherwise your uh, quantities will not come out correctly. That's kind of a behind the scenes look at the setup of how this how this works so you need to make sure you apply the proper feature definition and volume option to your different uh, components in your corridors as well as your uh, existing terrains and then ultimately when you want to display your 3D cut and fill meshes you need to select the proper cut and fill uh, mesh feature definitions as well. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.